Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base. I'm Will Robinson-Smith. I'll be providing our commentary for the duration of this coverage. We're broadcasting from the Space Flight Now News Bureau here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Our Stephen Young is running the technical operations of the broadcast this evening. And being that this is a West Coast launch, our photographers Adam Bernstein and Michael Kane are off getting some rest this evening. It'll be... A uh, busy few days as we get on into this upcoming week as Michael Kane is going to be chasing the eclipse, hoping to get some views of that down in the Texas area. Meanwhile, Adam is going to be sticking with us here in Florida as we have a rideshare mission for SpaceX. Bandwagon 1, the first batch of only 11 satellites as compared to the dozens that fly on the transporter missions, but 11 satellites are going to be on board that Falcon 9 rocket lifting off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center here. That's coming up tomorrow in the 7 o'clock hour p.m., and we'll have full coverage on that when that mission comes up. But tonight, we have a Starlink launch ahead of us. This is the first batch of satellites going up to the eighth shell. First time for this shell, but the second time that SpaceX is launching satellites that feature a direct-to-sell capability. If you recall back on the first launch of the year, there were six satellites included in that Starlink cadre that went up to low Earth orbit that had direct-to-sell features. And they've done a lot of testing of that service on the ground, very much in the, I guess, pre-beta stage, if you want to refer to it like that. But they have been able to uh, make calls, uh, post to X, formerly known as Twitter, as well as send text messages. So, so far, the service is proving to be what they were hoping. I'm going to add six more to that. Ultimately, wanting to get up to, I believe they told the FCC, about 7,500 direct-to-sell capable Starlinks as part of the Constellation. And a lot of those are going to be launching in the front half of this year or so. We'll be keeping track as much as SpaceX is going to be publishing when the direct cell Starlinks head up to low Earth orbit. But tonight we have six out of the total of 21 that are part of this mission. We are currently less than 30 minutes away from the launch of this mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base. Falcon 9 rocket will be lifting off from Space Launch Complex 4 East or Slick 4 E. Liftoff set for 7.25 p.m. Pacific, as you can see at the bottom of your screen. 10.25 Eastern, 0225 UTC. In other words, T minus 22 minutes. 13 seconds from now. We do have word from SpaceX that propellant load has begun, so they are committing themselves to this T0 time tonight. Even though the window lasts quite a bit longer, Hopefully, everything is moving along track as it appears to be for an on-time departure at 725 Pacific tonight. Certainly appreciate the 5,200 of you who are joining with us live this evening. If you haven't already, to allow more folks to find our live coverage, if you could be so kind as to hit that like button and share the stream, that way more folks can come on in as we cruise into the last 20 odd minutes before liftoff. 
Space Flight Now is also powered by our wonderful channel member community. So thanks to folks like that Opal guy, Jeff Hansen, Christopher Jones, Mark Otto, Renee Carrera, F. Huber, Distributor, 69, Air Nova, Doug W., and many others. Really appreciate your ongoing support of Space Flight Now. Channel membership comes with a number of perks, including discounts at our online shop, shop.spaceflightnow.com, as well as access to member-only videos here on YouTube and the ability to watch all of our Cape-based launches in 4K. And our thanks to one of our often very generous channel members, Clistia Lee, for gifting 10 Space Flight Now memberships, kicking us off on a good note here. If you are one of those lucky 10 who got gifted channel membership, be sure to thank Calistia in the live chat. And we hope you enjoy the benefits of your new channel membership. Last but not least, if you'd like to help support what we do here at the channel and on the website, you could use the YouTube Super Chat feature. Not only will that give us interesting things to talk about as we step on through the count, but you'll also be supporting what we do here at Space Flight Now. As long as your comment or question, of course, is appropriate to be read on the show. We would love to include you in our live coverage. We'll also be keeping an eye out in the live chat for relevant and constructive comments from our channel members. So we will keep our eyes to the live chat as much as we possibly can. We're T minus 19 minutes, 26 seconds and counting. With propellant load underway. Let's go ahead and talk about the remaining milestones that are left in the count today. Started at T minus 38 minutes when the launch director pulled the team for the start of prop load, which began with propellant load at T minus 35 minutes. RP-1, a rocket-grade kerosene, being loaded on the first and second stages of the Falcon 9 rocket, and liquid oxygen being loaded on board the first stage. T minus 30 minutes is when the cryogenic helium load began. That helium is loaded onto the pressure vessels of the first stage at the 30 minute mark and is used to pressurize the main propellant tanks during flight. T minus 25 minutes is when that process begins on the second stage. Brings us up to just a few minutes ago when the loading of uh, second stage kerosene wrapped up. Just a couple minutes ago, about T minus 20 minutes, 50 seconds is when the strong back chill down process began. If you recall from our Cape based launches, that's when we see the so-called big vent from the strong back, a visually striking sign as the feed lines are being chilled prior to second stage locks load, which is coming up in just two minutes from now, T minus 16 minutes. That's followed at the T minus seven minute mark with the chill down of the nine Merlin 1D engines there at the bottom of the Falcon 9 first stage. They flow a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and the turbo pumps and the, protects the engines from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. About six minutes out, the first stage kerosene tank should be full. And at T minus four and a half minutes, the strong back retract sequence begins here in Vandenberg. The transporter erector or the strong back reclines about 13 degrees away from the Falcon 9 rocket, and it stays in that position until liftoff. About three minutes out, the first stage liquid oxygen tank is fully loaded. Two minutes out, second stage locks load wraps up, and that means the Falcon 9 rocket is fully loaded with 1 million pounds of propellant. In the final 60 seconds, control of the countdown is handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computers. The propellant tanks are brought up to flight pressure. 45 seconds out, the SpaceX launch director will give their go for liftoff. The engine ignition command is issued at T minus three seconds. And then, of course, if all nine Merlin 1D engines ignite and are healthy, hold down clamps will get the command to release the Falcon 9 for liftoff at T zero, which again is coming up at 7:25 p.m. Pacific. 10:25 p.m. Eastern and 0225 UTC, or in 20, or excuse me, 16 minutes, 26 seconds, and counting. I want to thank a few more folks for your support this evening. Taskmaster Music with a two dollars super chat. Thank you so much, Taskmaster. I want to welcome George 
League us to channel membership at the pad leader level. Welcome aboard, George. Glad to have you with us. I hope you enjoy the perks of channel membership. And to one of our current channel members, Christopher Jones, thank you so much for the $2 super chat as well. Really appreciate that. Good to see you this evening. If you had an opportunity to catch Elon Musk's update on Starship earlier today, it's about a 45 minute or so presentation that he made talking about the evolution and the progress for that launch vehicle, doing quite a bit with the Starship program. Of course, eventually it will be launching from here in Florida, not for some time, but they are working towards having two operational towers both at Starbase and two here at the Cape. And they're looking at having their first Cape-based Starship Tower operational sometime in the middle of next year. Eagle-eyed viewers of Launchpad Live will have noticed that they have been dismantling the previously built legs there at the base of the Starship Tower working to create a functional system more in line with what's at Starbase. Musk said that Starbase will continue to be more of the developmental and testing side of the Starship program. And meanwhile, more of the operational side of things will eventually start to shift to Cape Canaveral. They're also looking at potentially trying to catch the super heavy booster during the fifth flight, it sounds like things are still on track, of course, with FAA approval, which is still outstanding. But a fourth launch of Starship sometime in May is very much within the realm of possibilities. So you may be seeing us head back to southern Texas in the not-too-distant future. Starship program constantly keeping us on our toes. Musk also briefly touched on having marine-based launch pads for Starship down the road as he described needing to launch hundreds if not thousands of Starships in waves in order to, as his stated goal has been for many years at this point, to make life multiplanetary. The renderings are quite a feat, so it's definitely worth giving it a watch and a listen if you'd like to get an update there on the Starship program. Of course, it'll be used to launch the larger version of the Starlink satellites compared to the ones that will be lifting off with this Falcon 9 launch today in 12 minutes and 52 seconds. For this Falcon flies, let's go ahead and walk you through the trajectory of this mission. We have one of our channel members, Josh King, with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Josh. Asking if this is another sunset launch like the last one from California. Given the timing, it should be right about sunset. So hopefully we'll get some very nice views of the Falcon 9 and some folks in the southwest United States. If the visibility is good, you may see it as far away. I know we've seen some photos of Falcon 9 launches from out in Arizona. So hopefully you've got relatively good visibility and we'll get some cool pictures coming up a little over 12 minutes from now. As far as where this bird is going to fly, it's going to leave from Space Launch Complex 4 East, Slick 4E, and fly in a southeasterly direction along the coast of Southern California, the western coast of Mexico. That orange line you see is the path of the first stage booster. Today, SpaceX is flying booster 1081. Spent most of its life over here on the East Coast, having first launched the Crew-7 group of astronauts, which arrived back on Earth not too long ago. It also supported the launch of 
SpaceX's 29th Commercial Resupply Services, or CRS, mission to the International Space Station. It launched a group of Starlink satellites on the 6-34 mission, lifting off from Pad 40 here at the Cape. It also launched NASA's PACE spacecraft and Earth-observing spacecraft looking at ocean color and planktons. And most recently, it launched a rideshare mission of its own, Transporter 10. That was its first launch from California. This, of course, coming up on the 2nd. And after liftoff in about a little over eight minutes into this mission, it will land on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. This will be the 88th landing on this drone ship, if successful, and the 293rd booster landing to date. Creeping up on the big 300 for SpaceX. It's been a very busy year for them in total. This is launch number 34, if you can believe it. Coming up in just over 10 minutes from now. We're about three minutes away from the engine chill-down sequence. Thermally conditioning those Falcon 9 first stage engines. Taking a look back at the live chat here, I want to thank... Astro Joe, one of our wonderful channel members, as well as a uh, fabulous moderator here for gifting a Space Line Now membership. Thanks, Astro Joe. Appreciate all you do. Want to thank Lososos for a $5 super chat. Thank you, Lososos. Jeffrey Sisk for a $2 super chat. Thank you, Jeffrey. Really appreciate it. And Jack Wagner for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Jack, for supporting the channel at that level, man. It's very kind of you. Also want to thank Astro Jen for helping out with the moderation duties tonight, as well as Stephanie B. Well, I don't see him here at the moment. I'll just give a ubiquitous shout out to Rusty Shackleford as well, one of our other channel moderators. Appreciate all of y'all for helping us out with these live streams. Does not go unnoticed. We're now T minus eight minutes, 43 seconds away from planned liftoff of these 21 Starlink satellites. This is what they look like in their launch configuration. I see our Adam Bernstein while he has got the camera put aside for tonight, helping us with moderation in the live chat as well. And I will echo his comment here, asking you to help us grow by hitting the like button. And yes, each does help amplify the exposure for more and more people. Also, if you haven't subscribed already to Space Flight Now, now's a great time to do that. When you do so, be sure to click the bell icon, turn on all notifications, so that way you get alerted when we do these live streams, as well as post new videos on the channel. Just a little over 195,000 subscribers so far. Love to see get up to 200,000. Got a couple more launches over the next few days. I think we can reach that goal. Between this, the Bandwagon 1 mission, and of course the finale of the Delta IV Heavy program going for its 16th and final launch for United Launch Alliance. That's coming up this Tuesday. And we'd love to see you there. Subscribing to Space Flight now here on YouTube. It's quick, easy, and free to do so. Just hit that subscribe button on down below this video. I'd love to have you join the community. Cruising on into T minus seven minutes, five seconds and counting, a couple seconds away from that engine chill. As mentioned, there are 21 Starlink satellites on board this particular Falcon 9 flight. Each of them clocking in at about 1,760 pounds. It's about 800 kilograms. Once their solar panels unfurl, they have a wingspan of about 100 feet or 30 meters. They use argon hull thrusters for in-orbit maneuvers, as opposed to the previously used krypton hull thrusters. They're built in Redmond, Washington, near Seattle. They'll be deployed at about 180 miles or 290 kilometers altitude above the Earth's surface at a 53-degree inclination.
photo that you're seeing here on your screen is about as good of an image as we have of a Starlink V2 mini satellite deployed on orbit. This picture coming to us from HEO Robotics captured last year of a Starlink. In a little less than a minute, we should be getting some video from SpaceX. So before we do, let's quickly step through the launch timeline after the Falcon 9 lifts off from the pad. It'll pass through max Q with a point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle, a little more than a minute out. That's followed by a few events in rapid succession. First, first stage managed cutoff or MECO at about 2.30, followed up by stage separation. And then second stage engine ignition or SES-1. Payload fairing jettison a little after three minutes. That's followed by the first stage entry burn, about six minutes, 10 seconds. That burn lasts about 20 seconds. First stage landing burn begins just shy of the eight minute mark. I'll set up a landing at about eight minutes and 17 seconds. Second stage engine cutoff happens before uh, the nine minute mark here. It goes into a parking orbit until about T plus 53 minutes, 33 seconds. Quick three second burn, setting up Starlink deployment. One hour, two minutes, 28 seconds. And with that, we'll go ahead and bring you these gorgeous sunset views of the Falcon 9 rocket as we are preparing for what looks to be a very lovely sunset launch tonight. Now, T minus four minutes and counting in real time. The slight discrepancy here between our countdown clock and what you see from SpaceX. Ours is in real time. The SpaceX feed coming in on a slight delay. You're seeing the strong back retract sequence there as the strong back or the transporter erector is reclining 13 degrees away from the Falcon 9 rocket. I want to thank a few more folks as we're closing on in the last few minutes here. Our thanks to Dennis Randolph for a $2 Super Chat. Linda Fimlade for a $2 Super Chat as well. Checking in from Santa Barbara. Eric DeVilla with the $10 Super Chat. Thank you so much, Eric. Saying thanks to Jenny Talia. We'll be watching from Victorville. Wow, Star-Lord with a very generous $20 Super Chat. Thank you, Wow, Star-Lord. So we're passing the three-minute mark here. Stage one lock slot is complete. I was just about to say. First stage liquid oxygen tank now fully loaded. In less than a minute, we should hear the call-out for the same on the Falcon 9 second stage. Thanks to Wow Starlord though for a very generous twenty dollars super chat. Thank you, Wow, for supporting us that level. Wumpy with a five dollars super chat asking, "Are the Starlink satellites already turned on?" Not exactly in the sense that I think you're asking. They will um, be activated and checked out once they're on orbit. That said, they are likely on internal power. They just go through a, an on-orbit checkout phase once they've actually deployed. Coming up on two minutes in the count. Go through just these last couple of super chats here. Jerome Miguel's 15 with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Jerome. Saying it's the first time I've known about a launch ahead of time. I'm in SoCal and so excited, which is always fabulous to hear. Sir Jeffrey Claude, thank you for joining us with channel membership. And Stage I'll make this the last, complete. last one for now. Uh, Jack Yates with a very generous $20 super chat. Sending out hopes for a bright future. We'll come back to the rest of the super chats on the other side of the launch. What you're seeing here is the ground gas closeouts as everything appears to be on track for this brilliant sunset. Falcon 9 preparing to take flight in just over a minute. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button. Allow some more folks to find their way in as we're cruising into Falcon 9 launch at sunset. 
from sunny and wonderfully cloudless California. Falcon 9 is in startup. And now 40 seconds out, we should hear the SpaceX launch director give their go for launch momentarily. LD, go for launch. And with that, go, seconds. go for launch. We're going to go ahead and step back and listen to the final count from SpaceX. Let's listen in. 14 seconds out in real time. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And lift off of Falcon 9, go SpaceX, go Starlink. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. And as you saw and are still seeing a brilliant liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket, Pulling away from the California coastline on the Starlink 8-1 mission. Now coming up on one minute into flight. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Falcon 9 vehicle now traveling faster than the speed of sound on this mission. Max Q. The call out Max Q. Falcon 9 passing through the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Coming up on those events in rapid succession that I mentioned a little bit earlier. We'll see first stage manage and cutoff for Miko. In fact, has started. T plus two minutes and 30 seconds. That'll be followed by stage separation four seconds later. Second stage engine starter SES one at about two plus uh, T plus two minutes and forty one seconds, and then Falcon nine payload fairing deployment at about three minutes and eight seconds into flight. Just a great shot. Of Falcon nine is following a nominal trajectory. The edge of the atmosphere there on the left hand side of your screen. It sounds like so far a nominal burn of the Falcon 9's nine Merlin engines. Coming up on Miko. Less than 10 seconds now on the SpaceX feed. Happening now in real time. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And all great call outs and some great visuals of both the Falcon 9 second stage and first stage. As you see, the hypersonic grid fence deploying on the first stage booster. Tell number B1081 in the SpaceX fleet. Those bursts you see there just beyond the grid fins, those are the cold gas thrusters. Both. Fairing separation confirmed. And you see the payload fairing is falling. following nominal trajectories. Away in those Starlink satellites exposed to the vacuum of space for the first time. Again, if you're just joining us, you're watching the flight of the Starlink 8 1 mission. Very much in progress. So far, following a nominal flight path. This launch of Starlink satellites also includes a batch of six that feature direct-to-cell capabilities, a new addition to the Starlink fleet and operational capability, bringing the total up to 12 so far. 
first six launched back in January. They've gone through a number of testing and checkouts of the direct-to-sell operations. SpaceX reports that they are getting good results from those so far, and so they're adding another six to the fleet. Now coming up on four and a half minutes into this launch, the next milestone we're expecting to see is at T plus six minutes and 10 seconds. That'll be for the first stage entry burn, that burn lasting about 20 seconds. Slowing down the Falcon 9 first stage booster in preparation for its landing burn, which will come about a minute and a half after that. Now coming up on five and a half minutes into flight. So far, everything appears to be going smoothly for SpaceX this evening. We're about 30 seconds away from the start of the entry burn beginning in real time. The time you want to watch those at the bottom of the screen coming from the SpaceX feed. Great shot of the shadow there on the Falcon 9 first stage. Just seeing the sun peer through the grid fins. That entry burn now beginning in real time. If you got a good telephoto lens in Southern California, you may be able to see it from the ground. Stage one entry burn startup. Burn lasting again about 20 seconds or so. Day one this entry burn shut down. You can see the speedometer drop dramatically there for the Falcon 9 first stage. Still climbing for the second stage as that Merlin vacuum engine continues on nominal burn. Now, a little over seven minutes Both into vehicles this flight. continue to follow nominal trajectories. Stage one, FDS is saved. We're less than a minute away from the start of the landing burn on the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage two, FTS is saved. Stage one, transonic. We're now just about 20 seconds away from seeing the start of the landing burn. Falcon 9 first stage has slowed to below the speed of sound. Stage one landing burn. See the landing legs deploy momentarily. Views Stage from the two is in terminal guidance. Drone ship should come up on that. There we go. Nice crisp views from the drone ship tonight. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And what appeared to be a sort of confirmation of a good landing of that first stage booster, a bit of an extra glow though, right before they cut away. And back shut down.
As it stands, we are now T plus 10 minutes, 7 seconds into this Falcon 9 flight. Don't believe we heard a call out for it, but it, at this point in the mission, the second stage should have entered into a nominal parking orbit. After the second stage engine cutoff or SECO, the Merlin vacuum engine will reignite at T plus 53 minutes and three seconds for a three second burn, setting up for Starlink satellite deployment at T plus one hour, two minutes, and 28 seconds. The ball continues to go well with this mission. Before we close out with our update to the mission stats, I want to thank some folks who made this live launch coverage possible tonight. Our thanks to channel member Robin Furbush for a $2 super chat. Thank you so much, Robin, who says great night for the launch. And yes, it seems like some wonderful views at sunset with not a cloud in the sky from what I could tell, at least in the immediate Southern California area. West LA response videos with a $2 super chat. Thank you so much, West LA. Appreciate that. Jessica Anderson with a $1 super chat. Thank you, Jessica. $2 super chat from Swell. Asking if we announce uh, live from Vandenberg. Uh, we have not done a launch directly from Vandenberg in my time here as far as boots on the ground, but we're looking at ways, as always, to expand and improve our live launch coverage. And so that is something that we are looking at the feasibility of. And certainly channel membership and the Super Chats help us toward expanding the capabilities of what we can do, both in travel for things like conferences and events, but hopefully with more robust sort of nominal launch coverage as well. So we appreciate the support in getting us to bring you better launch coverage year over year. Space Nerd with this $1 super chat. Thank you, Space Nerd, one of our wonderful channel members. Bucky P with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Bucky. Michael White with also with a $2 super chat saying this is awesome. Keeping it 100. 10 minute meditation. Namaste with a $2 super chat. Thank you so much. Shelly Easton with a $2 super chat as well. Thank you, Shelly. Sam with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Sam. Our thanks also to Britt Lindley, the $2 super chat, saying, well, this launch track over Texas tonight, that message I'm guessing coming in before the launch itself. And uh, no, the flight path of basically every orbital launch is designed to not fly over land. So the next uh, good launch you'll be able to see from Texas will be the launch of Starship coming up potentially as soon as May. But we may see a suborbital flight from Texas be potentially before then. The first black astronaut candidate, Ed Dwight, is set to be among the six passengers flying on Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket, which, while they haven't given a launch date for that yet, uh, they describe as coming up potentially soon. So whether that means sometime in April or sometime in May, it'll be exciting to see him. Currently 90 years old, creeping upon 91. Could be the oldest person to fly above the Carmen line once he launches. Our thanks also to Eric Lomas for a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Eric. Eric says, my daughter is so excited to watch from our backyard in Salinas. I hope you're able to see the launch well tonight. Certainly looked like good launch viewing. Wow, Star-Lord with the $10 super chat. Thank you, Star-Lord. Really appreciate a little bit more support tonight. Bukoskin with a 100 RSD super chat. Asking if Sam Altman was the commentator. No, I'm no Sam Altman. Just Will Robinson-Smith. One of our wonderful channel members, Josh King, with a $5 super chat. Saying, on the last launch from California, I saw the picture on Instagram of people seeing the Falcon 9 
during a Dodger game, which is very cool. Yeah, I know one of my former colleagues at Spectrum News 13 was able to catch one of our recent uh, Falcon 9 flights from here when he was watching uh, an Orlando soccer game. So it's always cool when you can blend sports and space flight. Chrissy with a $10 super chat, thanking whomever he got the gifts up from, likely Calistia Lee or Astro Joe tonight. Valerie Harris with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Valerie. CM2008 with a $5 super chat. Thank you, CM. DJ Andreas with a $2 super chat. Thank you, DJ, saying thanks for the coverage. You're very welcome. Thanks for your support. And our thanks to Nicole G and Kangas Cook Dash Rude for a $2 super chat apiece. Really appreciate the both of you. And with the successful liftoff and apparent landing, although it looked a little uh, interesting there at the end coming on the drone ship, appeared as though one of the uh, Merlin engines was still firing even after landing, which was a little odd. We'll hopefully get an update on that at some point from SpaceX, although yeah, we'll see. Here are the mission stats as they currently stand. This was the sixth flight of Falcon 9 Booster 1081 in the SpaceX fleet. This was the 319th Falcon 9 launch to date, the 34th Falcon flight of 2024. 34th orbital launch of this year so far as well. This was the 107th orbital launch in the last 365 days. The 72nd orbital launch from Space Launch Complex 4 East. And the 140th overall launch from this pad as well. And the 12th launch from Vandenberg in 2024. This was the 88th landing of a booster on the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. The 228th SpaceX drone ship landing to date and the 293rd booster landing so far. Finally, moving on to some industry level stats. This was the 12th orbital launch from California. The 36th orbital launch from U.S. soil. The 39th from U.S. rocket company, including the three from Rocket Lab down in New Zealand getting ready for their fourth coming up uh, later this month. And this is the 66th orbital launch from around the world. This is how that shakes out on the pie chart. The U.S. still leading with SpaceX leading the charge of 57% of launches so far. About a quarter of all the launches coming from China. You can see the rest of the breakdown from here. Elon Musk also noting from his uh, presentation, which was given to folks at Starbase on Thursday, but published to social media on uh, or earlier today, I should say. He predicted that by the time that Starship is fully operational and flying with regularity, that SpaceX alone will be delivering 99% of all up mass to low Earth orbit by the time Starship is making regular flights, which is quite astounding when you think of it in those terms. Of course, we'll have continuous coverage of the Starship program as it rolls on, as is the case with the rest of the space industry. I want to thank just a few more folks. I saw some live chats trickle on in as we were going through the mission stats and definitely want to thank all the people that support this live coverage and make it possible. Our thanks to William Gore for a $3 super chat. Thank you so much, William. It's a great name. Calistia Lee with a very generous $20 super chat responding to an uh, earlier comment that I was responding to uh, saying there's no just about you, Will. Love your style. Well, thank you, Calistia. That's very kind of you to say. Uh, Tara, uh, Tamra Traxel. Traxel. Apologies, Tamra, if I mispronounced your last name, but thank you so much for the super chat and the kind words saying, as always, fantastic broadcast. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tamara, for supporting the broadcast. Really appreciate that. Greg Ferguson with a $2 super chat saying, hi, son. Hello, Greg. Haley Higgins with a $2 super chat. Thank you so much, Haley. John Hirosuka with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, John. And thanks also to Damon Langford. For a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Damon. Really appreciate 
kind words of great show. William Franco with a $5 super chat as well. Thanking us for the coverage from Peoria, Arizona. And last but not least, Ed Boswell for a $2 super chat as well. Thank you so much, Ed. And if you haven't gotten your fill of live launch coverage for this weekend, again, we do have one more coming up on deck before we head into the work week. That is the Bandwagon 1 mission, which is going to be launching from Pad 39A here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. That mission is set to launch tomorrow at 7.16 p.m. Eastern. That is 23.16 UTC. And if for whatever reason they're not able to launch, there is a backup opportunity coming up on Monday for that mission. If you hear some clacking in the background, I was just looking at what the weather outlook for tomorrow was like. According to the 45th Weather Squadron, we're going to have a pretty great launch weather opportunity here. Greater than 95% favorable chance for good liftoff weather, with the only watch item being the thick cloud layers rule. That's for the Bandwagon 1 mission launching from NASA Kennedy Space Center. So good opportunity to see a launch fear out here in central Florida for uh, business or perhaps for uh, spring break. I know there's still some spring break trips happening right now. So if you happen to be in central Florida, you can catch that launch tomorrow. Of course, we also have, again, the Delta IV Heavy making its final appearance on a launch pad, getting ready to lift off on Tuesday. Very much looking forward to hopefully getting through that full countdown and seeing that Delta IV fly, closing out more than 60 years of the Delta legacy. One last point of note on this launch. This was a record turnaround for the pad here at Space Launch Complex 4 East. It has only been four days, 23 hours, and 55 minutes since the last launch, where it normally takes about at least five days between launches. So congratulations to SpaceX for improving the turnaround time for this pad. And we will expect to see more records like that broken in the year to come would not be shocked want to thank just a couple more folks who hit it at the buzzer with some support for the channel want to welcome Eric Edwards joining us with channel membership at the pad leader level. Thank you so much, Eric. And lastly here, Brandon Gonzalez with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Brandon. Brandon says live about an hour away from Vandenberg. Saw the launch, which is always wonderful to hear. Greetings from San Luis Obispo, California. I'm very familiar with San Luis Obispo. As a Sacramento kid myself. It's always great to see the various cities in the Golden State represented. And with that, we're going to go ahead and close things out for this evening. I want to thank again our wonderful moderators here in the live chat. Astro Jen, Astro Joe, Stephanie B. And I don't believe I saw Rusty tonight, but thanks also to Rusty Shackleford. I know he tends to help out over on Launchpad Live, so we'd like to see continued views of the pads over at 39A and B and views from Starbase via our friends at Padre. You can always hop over 24 hours a day to Launchpad Live and check that out. And again, we'll be back here with live coverage of the Bandwagon 1 mission, sending 11 satellites up to a mid-inclination orbit coming up tomorrow evening, just a little bit after 7 o'clock. Thanks to Stephen Young for running things in the background on a technical aspect for this stream. For Adam Bernstein, 
not in a camera capacity tonight, but hanging out with us in the live chat, helping to do some moderation duties as well. Thanks, bud. And most importantly, thanks to you from wherever you're watching around the world, joining us for our live launch coverage of the Starlink 8-1 mission, sending up 21 Starlink satellites, including six with direct-to-cell capabilities. For all of us here, oh, and I see Astro Joe noting that Rusty Shockleford was here. So, fabulous. Our thanks to all of you. And for the team here at Space Flight Now, I'm a Robinson Smith. Love it if you subscribe on the way out. But of course, as always, be good to yourself, be good to others, and we will see you next time. Good night.